In the top right, we have the red Protoss player from Team LTK. She is Nina. And her opponent in the bottom left with the blue Zerg drones. It's Scarlet. Yeah, this should be a really good, uh, a good series to end the day on, I think. We've had some excellent StarCraft matches. Still not quite over the uh, King Cobra blind match. That was uh, yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was something special. If this is going to be anything like that, Protoss versus Zerk, we should be in for a treat. Yeah, you know, hopefully not. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can handle that. I, I felt like I had a pretty good grip on everything today, and then we got into that series, and I kind of broke. So, well, uh, you were can, talking about foggy sandwiches last game. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm totally gone. So, thank, I mean, well, you were always going to end up carrying this cast. So. Thankfully, you are here, but well, uh, this is uh, maybe we, several maybe we hours after to... my bedtime. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> getting a little late for me. <laughs> Sorry, are you are you gonna tell me what sandwich you would have then, or are we gonna we gonna no, 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 we no, gonna no. be professional? Yeah, we're gonna be professional. We've got this one. Dude. All right, all right. I think so. I think it'll be a match a match worth taking seriously. Scarlet taking that third base position with the drum, with the hatch. So we'll just have to see. Nina equally likely, and from my perspective. Can, of course, go Stargate. Very standard, very normal. Mm -hmm. Nina also likes to be very micro-heavy. So if she thinks that this game is going to go towards Blink Stalkers, then I, I could easily see her just going straight there and trying to immediately bring the pressure. But that's that's kind of what yeah. makes this matchup as exciting is it's not very easy to predict. Yeah, Oracles are really good. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be a Stargate opener most of the time here from Nina, just because it's the... Well, it's the go-to opener, especially if you want to go into Blink Stalker a little bit later. It's super good to just get started with those units so you can actually comfortably take the third Nexus. That's usually one of the problems you can run into. But yeah, PBZ, it's definitely, uh, it's become a very exciting matchup, right? If you compare it to where it was a year ago with the heavy Void Ray style, I think most people after watching a couple of months of that weren't necessarily as excited yeah. anymore about PBZ. But yeah, it's gotten a lot of fun. I like it whenever think... the lower tier units are... Yeah, being used quite a bit. Usually those games tend to be quite exciting. Yeah, as that's always been like the most difficult thing to bet to like, you know, not not balance, but get people to not be too defensive because the late game units are so valuable, right? But mm -hmm. have have the early game units be hey, strong right. enough that we can get those those exciting back and forths, right? Because it's like if you just have that like, honestly, it was a little bit overtuned. I think we can all we can all agree there. So it's been the new PVZ has been a lot more interesting. So that Twilight Council coming in quickly mm -hmm. for Nina. That's that's kind of what I'm saying though. I'd like to see just straight into Blink. Just just get right into the action. Why yeah. not? Very interesting. I, I didn't actually expect that. So that's really cool to see. Twilight Council is done though. Are we gonna go into a dark shrine? Is that what we're doing? I think so. Yeah, there it is. Ooh, okay. Um, this straight is into also the dark a very Templar. Fun yeah, now it is the norm, since oracles are so common, to build your spore crawlers right about, well, between right now and like 20 seconds from here. So uh, sometimes you, yeah, you can, you know, try and be really tricky by forcing out detectional accident, which <laughs> not necessarily always okay. The thing is, Scarlet has an overlord at the front, and that's where the robo facility is building, so there's a good chance that, yeah, Scarlet is not going to add those spores just yet, or maybe at all. Yeah, and she... I mean, you, she'll see that the prism is coming out and that might be enough in, inclination to just get like a spore to push it away. But I feel like there could be a, like a level of mind games here where maybe Nina is expecting that Scarlet's going to be greedy if she can and not just blindly get the spores. So that's kind of what opens it up. And the Dark Shrine is finishing. The prism is mm -hmm. almost ready. So it really just depends what happens when Scarlet sees that prism and she should. Yeah, I think the timing to make spores... Okay, I was going to say, it's like five seconds ago. I have yeah, right 420 now. in my head, but yeah, I, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's coming up right now. So that's really quite important. There's obviously those games every once in a while where three Dark Templar march in, and that happens to be the end of it, especially... Oh, it's actually a single... Wait, what? Uh, it's a single just Archon? A, just a single Archon. Okay. Okay. I guess, it's I guess a Nina that... built. That, that happens too. Is this an Overlord Hunter? Is is that what we're doing? Are we hunting Overlords? Nina was thinking to herself right as this game started, what will the casters say I'm going to do? <laughs> I'd like to do the thing that will 100% make them both feel as silly as possible. And with the Observer, I, like, yeah, okay. You can kind of, you can mess with Lings with a Prism and an Archon. You could try to clear some of the creep. 
I think the Queens are, are still a pretty decent answer to this, but I'm not going to hate on it. There, there's still the potential for the Adepts to get a little backstab action, but they, they will be spotted by this Overlord. Interesting. So even though this was a Twilight Council opener, the third Nexus still came up nice and early. That can be quite tricky if there's a lot of Zerklings out on the battlefield, but not the case over here. Well, now they're available, but the third Nexus obviously is already done. Anyways, yeah, interesting little start. Just a, a heavy macro focus right here from Nina. Scarlet Dawn not really falling behind too much. I mean, sure, an Overlord ended up going down. A couple Creep Tumors here and there, but still definitely in our comfort zone. Uh, and with the immortal follow-up, I mean, having the prism early, it's like, on one hand, Scarlet knows about it and will be aware of it. And on the other hand, like, Nina can, of course, use it for harassment down the line. And just, I kind of like this, actually. It's it, like it, Archon it's... Hopscotch with these roaches. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of creep tubers that have gone down so far. And at the very least, the creep is not out nearly as far as we normally see. Hmm. Kind of fun. I yeah, well, when you're playing against someone who's kind of known for the creep spread, I suppose focusing, neutralizing that is, it's a strategy that makes sense, even though, I mean, you're, you know, you're just doing all of this to, for queen energy, really, right? But it does <laughs> delay any push. It does delay any push that Scarlet would want to make if she was going to walk Ooh. with queens. But uh, Swarm Host is the follow-up. That can be... That can be terrifying. I'm, I'm of the school of thought. If they catch you completely by surprise, they can absolutely take over a game, but... Have we have, have we seen Nina really been throwing anything in to, to get that information? And not not no. really much in, as far as any scouting at all beyond the fact that the lair was built at the third, which is somewhat of a giveaway, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, you bring up a good point. So that's usually what happens when you go for the Oracle opener, right? Like not only do you get some damage in, you kill a couple drones here and there, you also accidentally scout because you've cut your units instead of your opponent's bases. At this point, Nina has absolutely no idea about the Swarm Host, and because of that, I actually quite like it. Normally, it's not that great of a strategy, it seems, in the current meta, but these units are going to show up unscouted. That said, yeah, Nina's just about making herself up for a big counterattack. And now the, hmm, now the Swarm Host can actually be kind of awkward. Normally, you want to really be in the face of your opponent with these units. Yeah, this is where it gets tricky, because the best thing that Scarlet can do oh, is try to good. sandwich this army, but Nina... Kind of, kind of times this about as well as she can to be able to retreat without being forced to fight against the Locust. And even the Prism there, picking up some of the slow units on the tail end, like those sentries. So not losing the force fields is really nice. The first wave of Locust expires, kind of worthless. And mm -hmm. Scarlet, whether it's pressure or something else, she throws out a Nidus network in plus two range. So is whatever's gonna happen in this fight, and the, the Roaches and Ravagers on their own should not be enough. Even with these Queens, still another eight seconds to go on the cooldown for the Swarm House. And she might just try and, I'm going to guess, either reinforce with the Nidus, or she does have the Overseer between the Natural and the Third. She could try to put something over there. Yeah, that very first Locust Wave is incredibly important. So the fact that Nina just shut that down really cleanly is awesome. Now, next wave is already here. There should be a Colossus in just a moment as well, although Nina actually might be hitting a bit of a supply block. I'm not exactly sure what's happening with that unit right now. Either way, it's not here yet, but... Yeah, this way oh, yeah, definitely dealt more damage. Oh, it's a contamination. Yeah. All right. Yeah, contaminate was about uh, five seconds away from finishing there on the robotics facility. So that Colossus will be out soon. Just uh, not quite as soon as it otherwise would have. Oh, and that Archon. Archon at the front. It's got eight shields. <laughs> Bring it back, please. Please. Just put it All in front right. of the shield battery. Just for two seconds. Do we have a battery? Yes, there's a few. There's at least one. There's exactly one. All right. Yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned the uh, the Nidus network. It's out there somewhere. It's just not been used yet. Maybe it's... Uh, oh, okay, there, there it is. There you go. Speak. I think it's to, you, to, maneuver, you, yeah, to maneuver those swarm hosts back and forth. So now they're over here, and then suddenly at a third base again. It's definitely a way to get a lot of value. That Nexus just gets picked up really easily. Yeah, and that's that's the scary part about it. If, if you're on the back foot defending against swarm hosts, you're putting yourself on a little bit of a timer if you're not able to just completely one-shot the waves. You want to be bringing that pressure. You want to be forcing the Zerg to use those waves as defensively as they can. And that spot's also awkward because it's a direct path to the base. Yes, but at the same time, you got to get rid of those rocks or your army's kind of choking up and the Ravager piles are very difficult to get around there too. So Scarlet, that Nidus Worm is going to get picked off by these Dark Temp... Oh! Oh, oh, she's Nina's waiting. waiting. Yeah, she's waiting on purpose. That is not a misplay. Waiting for those Swarmos to pop I've out. I've seen that. They're coming soon. Yeah, that's actually really clever. I don't think I've seen that before either, but waiting with the DTs 
first and foremost to uh, yeah, poke out of the worm. See how it goes. Yeah, okay, they're coming out. They're coming out now. The DTs. Tr so what happens is <laughs> the locusts just they do get summoned, but the overseer has oh. the vision. So all the DTs. No, oh, well. Yeah, in the end, we saw uh, one night. <sighs> like the back. coolest thing that didn't <laughs> yeah. work. That's the coolest thing that didn't work today. But you know what? Big props. Because it would have been awesome. The 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 idea there to just to cut off the retreat path is awesome, but ends up kind of backfiring and Nina's pu trying to push up this ramp, but there's so many Ravagers, so many Roaches, and just that rain of vials kind of creating this, this space that she just can't step into without getting crushed. Yeah, I like this army for Protals quite a bit, though. It's starting to really deal a lot of damage. It's those Swarm Hosts in the meantime that are constantly dealing damage on the other side of the map, right? I mean, they haven't been as useful as they sometimes can be. Okay, now the Biles are connecting. That's not what you want to have happen here. And here's the crazy thing, Loco, because it, it, weirdly enough, all of the attacks are by this base that is now the Hive. And on one hand, Hive valuable, yes, but also 3,000 hit points or 3,500 mm -hmm. hit points. So it's a whole lot harder to bring this down than one of the uh -huh. other bases if she's forced to defend. Yeah, quite a bit of damage uh, being done right now. Okay, sadly, one Colossus miss Relit. Now the Zerklings are here, though, and that's where this uh, game gets a little bit trickier. In just a moment, we are also going to see Lurkers here from Zerk, and that's what really shuts down these Stalker Zealot-based attacks. There's not actually a uh, charge yet, which is also not quite ideal. Yeah, Scarlet definitely just growing all over the map right now, and Nina is in trouble. Yeah, this is just the toughest part. Not really able to force Scarlet oh. to bring the Swarm Host home, and... Once the, once the Zerg player can feel free to just keep launching those waves, it is it is just so brutal. And GG. there it is, GG. Nina's going to tap out, and Scarlet will take game number one. Yeah, clean game. I mean, one of the problems you run into, especially, is that first Locust wave, right? When that doesn't go well, and the opponent then suddenly finds themselves at like a 170, 180 or so supply, then suddenly that, uh, suddenly that Protoss army can come marching through the center of the map and do a little bit too much damage, but yeah, Scarlet managed to keep it at bay, even though the first Locust Wave didn't do too much. Yeah, and just what a, what an interesting couple of things that happened. There, it, it's like there were so many tiny opportunities, like the open with the Dark Shrine and the Warp Prism, but then it's just like, okay, your Overlord saw me, so I'm just gonna just completely go just for like this very middle of the road, not really doing damage, damage kind of thing. And like, there's a, there's another universe where all the swarm holes pop out of the Nidus. The Nidus gets killed very quickly. And then like the swarm mm -hmm. either can't run away or something like that. But there's just all these little things that yeah. add up. And if that worm was planted down with a Zorkling spot instead of a, an Overseer, that would have looked very different. Like if that yeah. one Nidus worm where the, uh, the Dark Templar we're waiting right next to was, yeah, used with a Zorkling rather than an Overseer. <laughs> that would have been, that would have been quite nice for Protals there, I think. That was a cute little move. Sadly didn't work out, but yeah, now that we've seen it, you wonder why we haven't seen it before. Yeah. So uh, we get getting ready for the next map. It looks like it's going to be on Data C. Mm-hmm. We're just waiting to get the rest of the players in. So. That game, I feel like, met our expectations, though. We kind of talked about how both of them, really, they, they like to be aggressive when they can. They both kind of have their own style or way that they like to do things. I feel like that was something that really came out in that game. And I wonder, cause I feel like Nina will definitely mix it up going into game two a little bit uh, if she didn't feel like she could do anything with the DT and the Prism early on. So yeah, the opener was interesting, the, right? Yeah, like I can't imagine that that was like the goal. Like at the start of the game, like I'm going to rush an Archon to clear creep, you know? I mean, it killed like seven tumors, I think, as well as an Overlord. But yeah, that's more than we sometimes see Oracles make. And then the, the Swarmos, I guess, came unscouted and they were also countered pretty hard with the very first wave. So honestly, uh, yeah, despite the weird start there for Protals, it definitely wasn't the, the worst, like, first, I want to say, six, seven minutes of the game. It's just that after that, it went south. I think that's usually the problem you run into with Swarm Host play, right? Like, it's not necessarily the strongest approach that Zerg has, but since you don't play against it all too much, most Zergs right now are going Mutas whenever they want to get tricky or they maybe go for, like, a, a cheeky Nidus all-in or something like that. You don't play against Swarm Host as frequently, so it does require a different approach, and it's very easy to accidentally mess up and... Yeah, if you take one wave of locust uh, to the face, then suddenly 
you lose a couple structures here and there, maybe a Nexus, and, and then, you know, you end up losing the game a few minutes later. But yeah, cool style yeah. to see. I like what both players were doing. Yeah, it's so... I, I, I agree with you 100% too on this. the case of the Swarmos. Usually, if the first wave doesn't do anything and you get to see it, then it feels like that counter that counter window needs to be there. But it's just so it's so tough the way that Scarlet set everything up. Like I re again going back to just building the lair there, just mm -hmm. making it so that this base, if you want to target it because it's the easiest place you can access, there's the choke point with the rock. Scarlet left those, and then it, that base just has more health. So if you're going to try to commit to picking it off with your army, it's going to cost you way more than if it was just a hatchery. And it also takes away the threat of like a prism going in to snipe the tech in the main base. Yeah. So these two players are in the same group as Astrea, I think most notably. So it's actually quite important for them to do really well against one another just to, uh, yeah, move out of the group in first and in second place. I think we can all expect Scarlet and Nina to do really well in this group. But uh, getting top two or getting top four is definitely quite the difference. So winning this series, Certainly something they're looking to do. Yeah, definitely the more stacked group of the two. You know, like mm -hmm. you, you have the expectation Neeb should end up on top of group A. Everybody else, it, it feels like a pretty mixed bag on A for who could make it out. It, I think it's, I honestly think it's pretty wide open, but Astrea has probably been one of the, the more interesting talked about NA players like coming up through this period of time behind Scarlet Nina and I don't know. I think I think Australia could be a contender in this group. He's someone that I've I've wanted to see reach those those absolute highest levels. Great, uh, great Protoss player. So we're loaded in to Data mm -hmm. C. Alrighty. So top right hand corner, the player that's currently one zero behind. Her name is Nina. And in the bottom left, our blue Zerg player. She is Shopify Rebellion's Scarlet. I really wonder what the plan was with the early game opener in that previous game. Like, we saw a very quick, for those of you that did not see it, we, we went for a really quick Twilight Council into a very quick Dark Shrine to then rush out a Warp Prism, warp in two Dark Templar, morph it into a single Archon to snipe Creep Tumors at an Overlord. Like... <laughs> I'm with you. It almost seems like that wasn't the original plan, but I wouldn't be surprised if Nina's like, okay, Scarlet, she's so good at that early game defense, I'm not likely to get a whole lot of damage done anyways. So this way, at the very least, can slow down one of her yeah, strongest parts in the game. Obviously, Scarlet very well known for the creep spread, especially in the early days of StarCraft 2. That's what she uh, yeah, was really, really focused on. It's kind of uh, an interesting opener because it's not like something really threw her off in the early game either. No, exactly. Like, cause the low ground base got taken early on, but there wasn't wasn't much in the way of like a pylon block or anything. So, I think that in this matchup there have to be mind games though, cause if you're playing on NA or even just the tournaments that are that are American based that are run, Nina and Scarlet is is not like a super rare matchup. So mm -hmm. it, it kind of goes kind of kind of goes in and out of that that mind game flow, cause I'm. I feel like sometimes if Scarlet feels like she can just just bully somebody or beat up on them, you'll get those pull first, those Ling Floods, even in this matchup, that early melee, something to just put the pressure on and snowball it. But Nina has had that experience, and I think it kind of has uh, you know the ability to handle that, which is the level of respect that Scarlet shows by being like, well, we'll take us a little bit further. We'll make it that macro-focused game. And Nina is... Uh, more of a micro base player likes to do those those cheeky things, whether it's with a drop or with a, an, an air unit. In this game, it's going to be uh, something from the Stargate. So I do like that. Hopefully, you know, could take some control with the Oracles early on, maybe get a little bit better scouting as a result of that and could help prevent uh, getting blindsided by those swarm hosts again. It's most likely going to be a couple of Oracles out of that Stargate. That's what we see most of the time. But of course, these two have faced off against each other many times, although not so much recently. So I believe it was Zombie Grub who mentioned that the last time they played was during the Home Story Cup qualifiers. Nina ended up winning at the time. That's already a little while ago. Um, so yeah, this style really has developed quite a bit over the last half year. Whereas initially, especially when Hero first started playing the mass Stalker-based uh, approach, he was playing it very aggressively, and these days players are playing it a little bit more defensively, but still focusing on that early game. 
it's just nice. It's just nice and comfortable. You can take such a quick third Nexus with it, and there's not a whole lot that Zerg can do about it. Plus, the Oracles can still be very helpful later on with, well, Revelations, and obviously you can start hunting down the drones as well. You can run into yeah. some issues, I guess, when you get a little bit too dependent on them if you uh, don't scout the Spire. Well, for example, Swarm Hosts, but yeah, overall, it's a good opener. Yeah, we got, we got an inkling of that strength of Nina's play in the last game. I mean, trying to make those pushes happen. It's just, like you said, not having that information. And the Oracle can change everything about that. Keep it alive. Get the tags. Kill stuff where you can. Try not to take too much damage beyond just the shields. And just see what's happening. Scarlet very on top of pushing it back, though. Gets quite yeah. a bit of damage done to it. But Nina, at the very least, did not lose it. So you pull it back, wait for the second one and try to find the opportunities that present themselves as a couple links will go back over to her side of the map and scarlet should be able to get a read on this third base but the oracle's pushing back very quickly not uh, not shy to spend that energy yeah this is a really good beginning right here for scarlet whenever you deal base damage to that oracle and it doesn't really kill anything and you're not even really getting it even remotely close to the mineral lines so the spore crawlers aren't even needed it's a very good beginning for zerk you need to deal some sort of damage, though, because Scarlet is... Yeah, look at the amount of workers that she's producing. She's already at 54. There's six more coming up. That's going to be three base saturation in just a moment. Okay, Oracles are coming yeah. in again. Yeah, we're going to settle <laughs> for just minute mark too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So a couple this of the deaths. We're going to shade over. The drone's already kind of hop, skipping and jumping around now, making it into the natural. And Nina actually getting some work done. Those drones mm -hmm. get clicked onto the plates, trying to attack the rock at the bottom of the ramp. A little bit awkward. And the other adept will make its way back over towards the third base once again, trying to grab whatever it can on the way out. And not, not too much else past that. Yeah, Scarlet had literally made like two Zerklings up to that point in the game. It was just queens and drones. I mean, a couple of spore crawlers, maybe some gases, but other than that, it's mostly just a bunch of drones. Definitely a little greedy, but yeah, losing four drones because of it. Honestly, still a net positive, I would say. Even though those Zerklings were uh, forced out eventually anyways, it's still uh, a good start right here for Scarlet. So how is she going to leverage this? She's going into plus one melee to get her with the bailing nest. How do you feel about the, the bailing nest over the roach line? Yeah, that is an interesting call. I, I guess it's because of the focus on the melee upgrades. Like, her expectation is that Nina will want to play with a lot of stalkers and kind of turn this into an interesting game of where are the oracles. Because if you know Nina, you know that you know that she'll want to build the stalkers if she can. And we know that if the Lings can get a good surround, they can still do a lot. It's a good freeze here with the stasis trap. Four drones locked up in uh, Purgatory in that main base. But I can see it there. I don't, I don't know 100% about the Banelings, though, because they've they really hammered in the, the last three patches that StarCraft II ever got. They really hammered in. We don't want you killing everything with Banelings, but if she gets enough onto them, you know, anything is possible. Or at least those little plus two run buys are still brutal. Yeah, it's the harassment that can deal so much damage, right? So these Zerklings now have plus one melee, which is awesome for them. They're gonna be able to deal way more damage to these Protoss units than they would otherwise do. Use the units that benefit from those upgrades quite a bit just because there's so many of them and they attack really quickly. Yeah, Scarlet's still looking at this. She's like, eh, I can make another 11 drones. Yeah, Creep no is so deal. far, it's fine. She's got a set up to 17 in production at one time there for a brief moment. Hmm. Definitely, definitely feels comfortable powering out the economy. And then Banely speed, Hydralis range, all of the things, all of the things that a Zerg player needs. Hey, here's my question for you, Loco. How big of a deal is it that as Nina Nina's finishing up the fourth base, and Scarlet hasn't really moved to take to take the fifth. So it's not like it should turn into this huge economy gap outside of just the worker count itself. It's not like Scarlet's eaten the map and taken all these bases while this has happened. Yeah, I think she's gonna go for a big attack. I think you're right. And this might actually backfire for Nina, who seems to be making herself up for a big attack as well. Uh, that one's gonna go off. Yeah, that's a really wow. nice one. <laughs> Beautiful move there from Nina. That's the first, yeah, first little bit of breathing room that she gets in this game so far. Obviously not ideal for that to happen this late there, or this late into the game, but better late than never. There's a massive Zerk army though. And Hydraling Bane is fantastic against just a bunch of stalkers. 
That's, I think that's I think that's where the focus was was coming from. Like like we were kind of alluding to is that we we kind of expect Nina will build stalkers if she feels like she can, but the other side of it too is that if if she feels like she needs to pull back and start going into charge lots and storm and she does have size storm well, just about done. So that's that's nice. There's energy on the Templar. The the next step becomes those lurkers, which you're mm -hmm. you're really gonna struggle against with just pure gateway, especially if Scarlet Ooh. gets enough of them. Queens are pretty good units, Nate. Let's see how those High Templar can do, though. Okay, those Bailings got popped. Zerkings do get on top of some of the Templar, but that was a good engagement there in the end for Protoss. Follow up, though. There's no, uh, yeah, there's no charge yet. We're gonna see a couple Archons added into the mix, which I really like. But you're definitely spot on with the Lurkers. As soon as those are out, these sort of pushes are just so hard to pull off. Another, another huge, stasis. nice. Ooh, another huge stasis, yeah. More Banelings coming through. Still lots of Hydras. I think the only thing maybe missing here for Nina is like a Warp Prism if she wants to reinforce this because everything is still just coming from her base. And I don't I don't hate the army, but this is definitely like an I'm going to overwhelm you setup from Scarlet. So either having the ability to pull back, but just that time, that that brief period of time that we're, we're literally just speaking in right now has given Scarlet time to get Lurkers. So those, those Stalkers are going to have their work cut out for them and a huge Zergling attack. Onto that north expansion, that fourth base of Nina. The Zealots are pretty heavily upgraded too, though. They've got their plus two. So the Zerglings realizing, okay, can't quite shoot through this just yet. And they'll try to finish off this fifth base that is warping in. Zealots very close, but will be forced to cancel it just to be safe. Yeah, not not bad for Nina at all, though. Like, that was a, a whole lot of Zerglings going down for, well, one of the late Nexus. Now transitioning towards more Stargates as well as a Fleet Beacon, plus one Flyer attacks. So those Lurkers are going to be fantastic for the time being, but they might not be as good in a couple minutes from now. Although, ooh, if you can get a big Storm on them, they will still die. Yeah, got at least one juicy one on the Lurkers. And if you can oh. spread out, of course that helps. <laughs> now we see where the Banelings get their value here. Yep. <laughs> Maybe not so much against the Stalkers, but do a big counter back toward that base. Actually recalls to that Nexus, so... Well, at least be able to. Yeah, I was gonna say if if you're thinking about where are these units gonna end up after they come through, then that could be a, a well timed little baneling placement could make things real ugly real quick. A recall on top of the banelings. <laughs> Just get to the other side of the map Yola. fast. And now suddenly the lurkers are also up north. That could be the end of that nexus once again. So I think one cancel on that base was okay. A kill on that base definitely not so nice especially after losing so many probes on the right side of the map. Still a large Protoss army uh, available. Uh, a lot of that supply is actually caught up right now as well on the carriers that are still in the production tab. I think this army should be pushed back without any Protoss flyers. Yeah, plus one attack is coming through for the carriers as well. Just three in production, but it's a lot of Bane Oh, it looks like Scarlet's trying to decide, do I want to blow up to go straight to the probe line? No, no, no. Let's take, let's take some of the cannons and batteries out so that these links can get the work done that they need to do and Nina trying her best to split the probes as much as possible, but still pretty huge amount of damage inflicted by our Zerg player. Yeah. We used to see this like a year ago and be like, oh my God, that's the end of the game. And now you see 31 probes going down and we still have 67. <laughs> it's not like Nina has the <laughs> worst economy in the world either. Anyways, the main problem right now though is indeed the amount of lurkers that are still out. I mean, eventually you can deal with them using the carriers. Okay, Ooh. well that's one way to get fighting. Massive storms on top of all of those lurkers. Now the stalkers though caught on the wrong side of that little whatever it is. Do blink so away. So many storms for the lurkers. It's actually starting to work oh. too. Quite a few of them have been picked off. Revelation tag helping with the chase. And almost all of the lurkers actually picked off there. Not a single one remains after that fight. Wow. So Nina turning things around and making her way towards that south central base. There's not really anything here to deal with. They're just hydras and lings, and those yeah. on their own will not be enough. Yeah, I thought that was actually not going to go particularly well for Protoss at all because those High Templar were right in the line of fire of all of those lurkers. But somehow they managed to stay alive. Four of them with a very high amount of energy. Um, without lurkers, how are you going to stop this army? I'm not sure. You got to deal with the carriers. You have. There's still a couple of side storms tucked in there, as, as mm -hmm. it should be. Yeah, and that's gonna push the hydralisks back even further. Now the drones are in danger, and carriers are starting to run a little bit low on interceptors. But even with just this number of stalkers in Nina's control, having the storm or two so that the hydras can't just dive is just making this so brutal. 
Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned for an overextension, though, because there's a lot of Zerg units still popping out of those cocoons. Now they're here. Okay, indeed, all of the interceptors are picked off. They're slowly rebuilding. Okay, reinforcing Zealots should be here to push back these Hydras. Okay, a couple more storms. My god, this is not the way that Nina had intended winning this game, but she's like, hey, if I can get all your lurkers just like that, I don't even think I need that many carriers. Yeah, well, that's from the waltz through this. I think the word you used uh, a couple seconds ago says it beautifully, though, a little overextension with the lurkers. They were just all out there on their own, not really in a position to be supported by the army. And now the rest of the carriers that are finishing up come over and. I think really what Nina just needs to do is give them a, a little bit of yeah. time to rebuild those interceptors, get another wave of two units warped in, maybe take another base just to be safe, and then just punch it in. Or, or she might even just be able to punch it in if she just waits for the interceptors. Yeah, more carriers are coming up. Whenever you're stuck with Hydra attack against carriers, you're in a bit of a tricky position. Uh, ideally, you want to go into Corruptors, but there's really no way that Scarlet can properly afford that at this point. This game really has uh, yeah, made a complete 180. Seems like a fantastic position for Scarlet just a little bit ago, but then, well, without Lurkers, it turns out this game is quite hard. Indeed. Could not say it better myself. Big attack again on this base that's being retaken on the bottom side. The Hydras are kind of pre-spread out to try and mitigate the storm, but what are you going to do? Those carriers, that range, once those interceptors are out, just trying to push through that into the storms is not going to work. And Nina continues to roll through wave after wave of the Zerg army. Lings and Hydras trying to push in desperately, but it is not going to be enough. GG. GG. We go into game three. Yeah, needed uh, about three dozen storms, but eventually she got there. Needed some very good hits with those High Templar. But uh, hey, they landed eventually. And because of that, well, Zerg didn't have much of an army anymore. <laughs> yeah. We're so used to seeing... Like in, in these situations where he's like, well, Storm is really good for killing low health, clumped up units. And then mm -hmm. Nina's like, well, they can kill anything that's clumped up. You just need a few more of them. And even if it wasn't what killed them, but just softening to them to the point where those stalkers blink forward and then everything is just getting one shot left and right. She had something like 10 lurkers with that push and they all died, could not save anything. Even if just two or three of those are at that hatchery when that big defense is being made, that could be the difference maker to push those stalkers back because their damage versus armored is ridiculous. But mm -hmm. really, that, that just goes to the credit of Nina. That's that's the control that we expect out of her. When she gets to play her game and micro those units like that, it, it looks kind of wild. Yeah. Now we see this all the time, right? And whenever there's like one lurker available, I, I've seen many Terran players be like, okay, well, I can literally never fight this ever again without ghosts. Right? And you see it all the time as well in, in Zerk versus Protos, where there's like three lurkers available and suddenly it's almost impossible, mentally at least, to play a ground-based army. Um, but yeah, Nina looked at that, she's like, okay, even though you have like a dozen lurkers sitting right over there, I don't think you actually can defend it. Yeah, very yeah. good engagement. That engagement changed the entire game, so that means we're going to Cosmic Sapphire. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see how they play this map, especially if Scarlet has anything funky. You know, you've got the gold base, you've got, mm -hmm. I, I think, one of the more interesting layouts as far as the bases go. Um, obviously, long term, the rocks into that, that kind of between the two thirds can become a factor. The, the airspace from that top right base can be a huge thing. There's so many different ways to attack and kind of be cheeky on Cosmic Sapphire. So I think they're just doing the ready check. Scarlet says go, Nina says ready. So we will be starting this one up and finding out who's going to win our last match of the day. It's nice to have you on here, Locos. Fun, fun getting to cast with you for the first time. What a nice yeah, long day good. of matches. You, you enjoying your, your NA, your trip to America here for these ones? It's always nice to see some high level StarCraft. I mean, I don't really care too much about the region. I just like good StarCraft too, you know, and good always. You know, some players are like, hey, only, only the very best players can can actually play good StarCraft 2, but we've had some absolute bangers today. Um, and, Amen uh, to that. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. All, All right. right. Here we go. Game number three between these two, our final map of the day. Spawning here in the top left-hand corner of Cosmic Sapphire, we have a Nina. And in the bottom right, the blue Zerg player representing Shopify Rebellion. She is Scarlet.
I'm expecting a pretty similar build in this game once again. The first couple minutes of a Zerk versus Protoss, they are usually, yeah, quite predictable right now. Mostly uh, the, the Stargate and then into a couple of Oracles. Well, not a super early probe scout. That's what Scarlet actually was kind of expecting there, sending that drone down so early, but. Looking to see if the drone was, the probe was going to come for the block, right? I'm mm -hmm. assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to see if there's a probe. And usually what you do is you send the drone a little early. And then if there is a probe in your natural, you take the third base first instead. It's very common these days for Protoss players to just send a probe right at the very start of the game. But Nina you know, apparently sending it after, I believe, that uh, that gateway on the low ground. A little bit later. Try Doesn't really matter all too much. Now, and trying to do a little, little cheeky mineral blocking over on the other side while she takes her Nexus in the natural and gets to see nothing super crazy. I mean, it looks about as standard as it can get. And I think that you're, you're probably spot on. So the question becomes then if it is going to be at Stargate, which I think was a great call on this map in particular. Again, tons of airspace. You can keep it chilling outside of that main fairly easily space to keep it outside of the natural and then you can bounce between the low ground base and the main pretty easily mm -hmm. as well so lots of reasons to want to take some form of air-based harass on cosmic sapphire yep and with that pylon positioning right there i think it almost has to be uh, a stargate just to try and get that oracle ever so uh, ever so slightly quicker towards the other side of the map Overlord's going to look for this as well. So Scarlet sees right now there's no warp gate research right away. And honestly, this is really all the info that you need. Wouldn't be surprised if it is going to be another 50 gas safe straight into that star game. Yeah, just about there. And the stalker, of course, would like to deny information if possible. Not a guaranteed thing, of course. And that Stargate that you mentioned is on the way at the very edge of that base. So yeah. is Scarlet going to go for a lot of lings, get those early melee upgrades again? Or will we see a return to something a little more traditional? Hmm. I actually kind of like this position on the pylon there. I think it makes sense because the units will get across a little bit faster. Does she spot it? Okay, she will spot it regardless. Anyways, there's a good chance that the Zerg player would not actually see that pylon close to the main mineral line. Usually it's right next to one of the gas geysers instead. So. Um, there's definitely a chance you, if you don't spot that pylon, that you think it's some sort of proxy, or at the very least you freak out a little bit. Anyway, Scarlet knows what she's going up against, but did come at the cost of that overlord. Mm. So, information is, of course, always going to be nice. The defense of the Oracle last game was pretty good. Had two queens, kind of ready to meet it immediately. Oracle tried to swerve into the main. The other two were already positioned to catch it. So... Nina took some early damage on the Oracle, and we didn't really see them generate that value until well, the, that mid-game phase, right? Where the, mm -hmm. the little attacks were happening, and all of a sudden, Nina was able to get some pretty big stasis traps. And looking back now and seeing, okay, well, you know, Nina was able to pull that game out. I think it's definitely safe to say that getting a couple of huge stasis traps on a half a mineral line and a queen or two is, is certainly a play that can put you ahead. So... I expect to see a similar level of tenacity out of Nina in this one. Yeah, I wonder what Scarlet is going to go for. So in game number one, she went for Swarm Host. Game number two, of course, we saw those Lurkers. And honestly, game number two started off really well for her as well. It's kind of funny, like game number one didn't start so well for Zerk, and then game number two was a fantastic start. Still, uh, the end result was not what you would expect in that case. Either way, there are, there are some cheeky builds with queen pushes as well, if you really get the creep going right now, since the creep from third to third, with the third bases that they've chosen, it's really not that far. Like, you can actually march queens from your third to the other side of the map. Um, yeah, we'll see if that's going to be something that Scarlet wants to consider here. So we got a stasis going down in the natural. That will just get a single drone. Was trying to swerve into the main with the other oracle at the same time. Did get at least one drone there. So we're seeing those oracles bring the pressure at the start of this one. That third oracle protecting the third base. Mm -hmm. And the follow-up with the Templar archives and the forge. And I'm, I'm just going to say, I, I'm just expecting there to be that move into blink. I don't know that you necessarily need to rush charge unless she feels the pressure from the lings. But... It's just kind of the way that Nina likes to play. Get the stalkers, be mobile, be able to, to get out there and start start trying to poke. Yeah, I think plus one uh, plus one melee together or plus one ground weapons, I guess, together with charge is also pretty good. But you definitely have to get something done with those zealots because otherwise the creep spread will just get absolutely ridiculous. It's once again plus one melee. So it's actually kind of interesting. I've noticed that Sarah likes to go for plus one missile quite a bit. I've seen Rainer do the same thing as well. Maybe it's just in the games that I've seen them play. 
Maybe the sample size is not big enough, but um, yeah, it seems like the, the vast majority of the Zerg players are really enjoying that plus one melee right now with the uh, the bailing nest and all that. Can be a little bit risky, I suppose, so maybe that's why we see some of the top level Zergs not necessarily focusing on that as much. But I think she's once again going to skip the Roach Warn here and just go straight into the Hydra then. So just play the same early game as we saw in game number two and just, yeah, try to make the best of it and try to not lose all the Lurkers this time. Yeah. Well, I, I think that there's like, there's two parts of it that I really like. And the first is, is that, you know, plus two Banelings is instantly accessible if you're focusing on the melee upgrades. So that harass form is really cool. But we, Scarlet did try to do a couple of big Ling attacks as well in the last one. And, you know, that, that attack on the top side base, maybe that one was uh, a, a bridge too far as it didn't get quite enough to, you know, for that one to be winnable. But I've always liked that. This map feels huge. This one's like gargantuan. So mm -hmm. being able to do those long run buys, if you see that the Protoss is out of position, then I then I really like the links just nibbling through those walls quickly. But it does it does feel like there's a bit of risk to it if the answer is there, because it's hard to overwhelm like an actual real Protoss army army with just those Zerglings. And we've already talked about the you know Banelings not uh, they don't kill everything as well as they used to. And a huge stasis again. Yeah. Nina racking them up. It's a lot of lost mining time every time. It's uh, really good for Protoss whenever they get such a massive stasis ward off. So fantastic work right there by Nina. Fourth next is coming up as well up north. Usually when you take that one, you also go a little bit further up north, right? And then you're suddenly next door neighbors with the Zerg. Bit scary. Anyways, there's once again the infestation pit. And there's once again the lurker dead. So we're basically just getting into a very similar situation as we saw in the previous one. Yeah, storm coming through, and I'm, you know what? I'm not going to say anything bad about that. No, no, no. Clearly, clearly Nina can kill everything with Psy Storm if she needs to. So lots of small units that are going to clump up in the form of Lings and Banes, and then those Hydras and the Lurkers. I mean, I, I'm assuming that Scarlet's going to play with them a little bit a little bit closer to the chest, you know, maybe maybe not overextend those as far as they were in, on Data C. No, I don't think... I don't think... I don't think she's gonna do that again. That's uh, if she does that again, then uh, there's a recipe for disaster. You're gonna have bad dreams for at least a week. Another massive stasis ward. This is gonna be one. a little too much. Another one. An another one. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. You love to see it. Hey, hey, and you know what? The other thing is, Nina has hasn't really had to deal with a whole lot coming to her side of the map. So we talked about this before, but that that base count, like who's picking up more money, how are things looking, and. Nina's able to get up to that four base pretty comfortably. That fifth, I think, is up for Scarlet. So yep. it's not too much of a gap. And actually, the fifth base starts up in that top right for Nina as well. So Look at the these links and bands will find some zealots. <laughs> and that, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, all of the creep spread. We need like a counter, like a Scarlet match without talking about the creep. Yeah, like we need like a, a percentage of map covered in creep just so we have like a a way to quantify it, you know, and compare it to your own games. I feel like if you were to watch one of my games at the nine minute mark, I've been like at 25% in one of my best games, but Scarlet is at a good, like, what, 75% map coverage with creep at this point. Those Getting are the post-game stats. Those are the mm -hmm. post-game stats we need, all right? Nobody cares how many buildings you destroyed or how many units you made or resources you mined. How many points I've got? I don't even I, know what the I, points I, mean. I want to know how much of the map did you cover with creep? How, mm -hmm. how far away from a gateway was a unit warped? Give me all of the useless information. <laughs> how did Fear Dragon not get that job? I'll never know. Uh, attacking in on the Southeast base though, we see another the other storm there on the Lurker. The downside of course, is that what well, you can whittle them down with the storm, that yeah, they still have a lot of health. You can transfuse them and that, that makes it a little bit easier on the side of Scarlet. And this, this looks like it could be getting set up for quite, I wanted to say a sandwich play, but Scarlet yeah. is just gonna straight up attack with the Lings. This is very scary, oh! though. Yeah, massive circling run by right now in the natural. Okay, something was sleeping on the job there. Maybe a little bit of oh, army hot king. That's immediately going to shut down that aggression. You actually need to be careful. There's still a lot of units now out in the middle of the map. A couple of storms in the retreat, but any probe died yet? 
actually not. Well, there was there was like that recall, but some of these units are kind of derping around too because Nina's trying to control the rest of her units to get back over to her expansion. And Scarlet wants to take something with all of this. And this is a little bit in the same realm. I, I almost feel like we are watching that last oh, no. game again. Yeah. Storms are going to come in. It's just the lurkers unsupported <laughs> trying to break that base down. And they're being chased and stormed and revelated. So you can't just burrow. You can't just stand and deliver. All you can do is run. And while, yes, it's great that she's flooding out the Lings, again, they have no Carapace upgrades. The Zealots are at plus two, so they are going to keep hacking and whacking and smacking those Lings into pieces. I think against, like, 50 Zerklings there, Nina lost, like, one probe. She didn't lose any more than that. Like, the counter oh, never popped up. Her, okay, now finally the workers are starting to pull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cast instant. Uh, a couple of Banelings here hunting down a gajillion That's a lot zealots. of Zealots in Banelings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Nina is being so aggressive, though, into a Lurker-based army. Like, Protoss players usually back off as soon as Lurkers are out, and she's like, nope, you're gonna have to double down on your Lurker play if you want to shut my ground army down already. And here we go. The carriers on the way. Scarlet did see the Fleet Beacon and everything with the units that went inside of Nina's base, though. And Nina is just gonna try and punch through on this west side. Lots of storms hitting the Lurkers. Observer taking a little bit of heat there, too. Yeah, those storms are dealing a lot of damage. Lurkers have a lot of health, though. Like, as, as little as, as Hydras have, Lurkers have uh, maybe a, a little bit on the extreme end of things. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of funny how much how much health they can actually uh, yeah, sustain themselves with. Okay, now Lurkers are chasing down High Templar, and this is what I was concerned for in the last game. All of those High Templars suddenly disappearing. And we got the, the Hydra Bane hit squad on the northeast end, so... Scarlet's just kind of, it almost feels like her game plan revolves around Nina just running out of energy to storm. And I, I feel like that's, that maybe is, is what the mistake is or the, the, the risk. Because Nina just has so many high Templars. Ooh. She's got eight with this army. There's the revelation. And you just expect, okay, yeah, go drop another storm or two on the other side and, or, and just keep pushing it back. But Scarlet will retreat for the time being. A lot of overseers to just leave here though. That is quite a few of them. Yeah. Yeah. Love to watch them pop, though. It's beautiful. Let's see, though. There's a, a lot of Protoss now on the map. Again, Nina just being aggressive. We see Protoss players usually playing a little bit more laid back, but not Nina. Just going straight for the throat here, and I kind of like it. This is uh, working out much better than I expected so far. We have 11 High Templar out. That might be a little too much. Oh, maybe not. Just so storm many storms. Yeah, just, just, storm just so many storms. Stormed up spine crawlers. I thought I playing Terran was the was the one where you press T to win, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. Just rapid fire storm here. Take it. If only it's stacked. That's, that's really what Starcraft is missing. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. What could have been more explosive? <laughs> <laughs> Why uh, not? Coming in from the side. Yeah, now oh. getting a good engagement though, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is. Usually what tends to happen whenever Protoss are getting aggressive at this stage in the game, there are just simply so many lurkers and it just simply deals so much damage. Yeah, that's not... <laughs> well, okay, hey, the only thing I'm thinking about now, we got four High Templar. None of them have enough energy for a storm. This could be the end for Nina in this best of three. If things don't turn around big time and soon. Uh, about mm. 68 energy right now on all four of them. They kind of came in at the same time. So it's just about buying as much time as possible as the interceptors oh. get burned out. Is the storm ready? One of them got picked. There's one. Uh, I like what Nina is doing, but I also, you know, it's it's like playing with fire, you know? It looks really cool. And there's definitely a chance it will go then, well, but and then there's also fire. a chance you're accidentally on fire. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like this is one of the situations that after losing all the units, you're not in a great spot. I know. This is StarCraft II rocket science. Are you, are you telling me that it's dangerous to have 42 Hydralisks inside your base? Yeah, not yeah. ideal. Not yeah. ideal. A little bit risky, there. Yeah. All right, here come the carriers. They're like, okay, you know what? I'm ready to go across. I saw uh, King Cobra doing this earlier today. I've got this. <laughs> and the prism, a little bit exposed there. There's one, okay, let's see. One Templar towards the front with no energy. The other one in the back was full. 
But the prism is gone. And the, really, the only thing Nina has going for her is that, that that precious face in the top center is still mining. So there's something there. But I don't know that she can really overpower this economy. There's just way too much Zerg here. Those storms are oh, juicy, nice. though. Beautiful, storms, <laughs> beautiful nice. work right there by Nina. All right, Hydro's okay. coming around the site. Yeah, I think that Nina was thinking about making a base as well to the right of the one that she's mining from, but that's not going to happen. Scarlet is not afraid of Psystorm. That's something that I no. learned today. A lot of Hydralisks died in the making of this film. So we're up to actually not even that many, only about 45 of them. Wow, how about that? Yeah. I would have guessed it probably would have been uh, close to like 80, but uh, actually the majority of them have stayed alive. Just dancing out of the yeah. storm, just barely. Another Nexus, by the way, has finished at the 9 o'clock position. Fully saturated on the minerals, so mm -hmm. Nina can keep keep on trucking. We've got, I think, 11 High Templar with the army, but that Lurker almost, yeah. uh, almost getting all of them there with the splash. It's just moments before disaster, you know? Like, every time those, <laughs> those High Templar get hit, I think they're all going to die, but somehow they keep staying alive. Cool. Once again. The most courageous High Templar in pro StarCraft history is what we're seeing here. Hey, these... These Giga Chad High Templar just float around. They don't care about nothing. They're not worried. They drop storms like boss, eat at the finest restaurants. Yep. What more is there to say? Storm is pretty good, but Scarlet is doing a fantastic job microing these units as well. I have a feeling if this would be uh, a weaker Zerk, this would work out <laughs> much better. <laughs> yeah. If you can like land the storms in the middle of those Hydra clumps continuously. Nina's okay, like, how many one. Hydralisks do you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot. The answer is a lot. There's there's about 49 right now on the map. Yeah, now the interceptors are being picked off one at a time as well. Every time they engage. Yeah, it's not what you want to have happen. A lot of these carriers. So there's literally more carriers right now than there are interceptors. So Nina needs a moment. That's not good. That is, that is definitely a tough spot to be in. A couple more of them do fly out. There's another. Oh, that's what you're looking for. Mm. In the meantime, by the way, a couple of zealots get cleaned up in the bottom left, I believe. Golden base now mining as well for Scarlet. It's a shame in the lore they say you can't you can't just cook Zerg and eat it because that's, that's a lot of a lot of a lot of meat being left uh, on this field, man. <laughs> God, I can't. I've watched so many hydralisks. It's organically okay. farmed right over here on Cosmic Sapphire. <laughs> That's right. A cage-free, protoss-fed hydralisks. Uh, Pre-charred -pre by the lightning over here. These storms are so sick. This is such a, a heavy high Templar focus. So to put it in comparison, normally we see like five, six, maybe up to eight high Templar in a crazy game. But Nina right now is roaming the map with... 16. Nobody would ever just build 16 High Templar and just walk around the map like they own it. 25 of them have died it. in this game. It's actually like she's crawled herself back into this game, right? It's, it's still a bad spot for Protals, but it's looking better now than a few minutes ago. It's it's like Scarlet has the money, Scarlet has the units, Scarlet has the bases, but at the same time, she can't really fight Nina. So... You, you know what she needs, unironically? Ultra Lux. Yeah, just pull bulldoze through, right? Just get the Templar. Kill yeah. the Templar and everything else kind of kind of falls into place. If this was Blight, it would definitely be Ultras out. They would have been out eight yes. minutes ago. Yeah, it would be nothing, be nothing but Ultralisks. No, he'd but have, ironically, they're another... really good here. They would absolutely destroy all those Archons and the High Templar and everything. Yeah. Technically speaking, you would imagine that the Lurkers are good too, but the Lurkers just never really finish them off. That's a good point. A lot of them did get damaged. I mean, most of them are not at full health. They just were in a good spot where those batteries were or, you know, the attention kind of got taken by the interceptors. If there's one other thing we can compliment Nina on, good focus fire on the lurkers in most of those fights. Mm -hmm. Always has the observer. Been pretty diligent about trying to get the revelations. That Oracle, you know, definitely got a lot of miles under the belt. So we have seen that continue to prosper. And I think maybe this is where it gets a little more interesting. The Vipers want to abduct yeah. these valuable units, going to grab the Lurker. But of course, you got to be a little bit wary of the storm and those feedbacks. I actually don't know if Vipers are the correct choice here. Like there's so many High Templar that theoretically the High Templar should counter that as well. Just rapid fire wave over the Vipers. You'll be able to outrange them. 
Every time we see something getting abducted, a storm landed there too. This reminds me. This reminds me a lot of how people would like describe Thor Zane's old place out, right? It's like the, it's just the spoon, just like slowly digging, digging out of you. Right. And that's that's exactly what this is like the Protoss version of that. Like Nina is gaining ground with every oh. one of these little fights. Oh. She's getting something, but the right. only the only hard part is it's a huge map. So you're trying to get to the other side here. Not not going to be an easy thing to do. All right, so the space in the bottom left will fall. It's going to come at the, yeah, at the cost of the Nexus up north. So maybe not ideal, but a gold base over here. It's not like Scarlet is that rich either. She's still, she's still maxed out. About two and a half thousand resources in the bank. That's pretty good, but that's like a storm and a half. And that's how Nina is calculating anything right now. She's like, yeah, you know what? One good storm. It's about 2,000 resources down the drain. That's all I really need to claw myself back into this game. She's still hunting. And you remember that creep threat we had a little bit ago? All of that is gone. Well, not all of it. I can't. I can't believe. I can't believe we've gone on this journey through space and time together in this match. Scarlet is now taking Nina's base in the top. We yep. got drones and probes mining together. And uh, her army is pretty much still just Hydralisks. So the Psy Storm oh, remains no, 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 strong. No, no. And is that it? Okay, well, just lost about five High Templar. Don't worry, there's 13 more over here. Oh, it's so dicey. They're so low. A couple of oh, the, the Dark Templar, though. Yes, yeah, sniping a base in the top right. So even though the creep is still out there, it's like one arm right there of Scarlet in the top section of the map. It's uh, still being shut down by a bunch of DTs. Absolutely ridiculous. This game is absolutely ridiculous. I had plans at 5 o'clock. I'm not going to lie to you, Loco. And uh, I think Ooh. I'm going to be going straight from this into that. I thought I was going to have time to eat. I'm not hey, it's 1 30 like a.m. o'clock tonight, bro. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, screw your time zones. <laughs> it's 1 30 in the morning, okay? I was it's a actually, long uh... day for it can be a long day for both of us, okay? okay, okay it can fair, be a, it can be a long day. It's not a competition. Look, I live I'm sure you're just life, as tired. Okay? Yeah, I'm no, sure I'm you're just as tired. I, I woke up at like seven. It's been a long, but I, you know what? I was feeling more tired at the beginning of this series than right now. This, this game <laughs> it, is it, bringing me back alive. <laughs> this has this has been a this has been a pretty exciting game. I can't lie. I'm, I'm more awake now. Yeah, exactly. Much more awake than I was in that that TVP. I can't even. What what? Who just played before this one? I don't yeah. remember any of the series other yeah, than uh, the Zerk versus Protoss between uh, Bly I, and King yeah, Cobra. Like some some Heart of the Swarm Terran yeah, versus Protoss game. Remember. It didn't really. Yeah. I actually unironically think Ultras would have been amazing in this game. I think Scarlet is probably also thinking like, okay, what do I need? Okay, so I'm going Corruptors. <laughs> what have I not tried? <laughs> yeah, I'm going Vipers. And Ultras are just such a, like, it's one of those units that you don't really build. It, it's just, you know, most Zerk players have made more Ultras and then lost games than, you know, they really wanted to. So you've kind of, you know, some Zerk players have definitely unhotkeyed the unit altogether, you know, like you don't accidentally want to make that. But it would have unironically been really good in this game. Yeah, we take stock. We've got 12 High Templar, four Void Rays, eight Carriers, and a couple Zealots and an Archon, and then 30 Hydras and 22 Corruptors with three Vipers and eight Lurkers. So the Lurkers have been struggling to do their zoning thing because Nina just doesn't care about the Lurkers when they come up to her army. She just drops seven storms in a row and somehow the High Templar don't die. Yeah. So that hasn't really been the answer. And we're like at that, that scary number where these carriers have just been ridiculous. I wonder I've why never no considered. I've never considered Hydra or sorry, uh, High Templar as a siege unit. But in the way that she's using it right now to just zone away the units, I'm like, okay, back off, back off, back off, and then suddenly the yeah, you know, the hatchery falls. It's it's kind of yeah. insane. What about a fungal? You think you just YOLO an infester and try to just get the fungal out? Like it can die mid cast. I I don't know. Yeah, could work. The thing is like, ooh, no, 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 not again. Oh. See, this is what is, is most concerning, right? That's kind of what you're hoping for here at Zerk, that you can suddenly abduct the units and maybe get a couple of good spine hits in with those lurkers. Still though. There's only 11 High Templar <laughs> left now, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really starting to be a problem, huh? Running running out of the storms, you could say. Uh, still seven carriers left. I, I do feel like Scarlet is finally, like ev everything that Nina did in this game has been pretty awesome. Frankly, like kind of came back from what seemed like a pretty ugly position earlier, but the base, the map is running out of money. Yeah. So there's, there's just only so much more that can be done. And Scarlet is only mining minerals at the moment herself. 
Here's that banger uh, unicorn position uh, again, though. Hydra Corruptor. Yeah, exactly. Pro, pro strats. This is a pro, pro strat, 100%. That's what they call a pro gamer move. 100%, yes. Whoever came up with that must have been ahead of the meta years and years ago. Anyways, that Protoss army's still moving around, but it's starting to look a little skinny right now, right? I mean, it's still High Templar. Okay, that's a good star. <laughs> <laughs> she can't keep getting away with it. Yeah, you'd imagine that it doesn't work 17 times over, but those corruptors, they're like one storm away from this whole puffing. It's a SpongeBob meme. Oh, it's old reliable. <laughs> yeah. All right, in the meantime, though, the Zork Swarm has arrived at the Protoss main base after destroying the natural, the third, the fourth. So Nina is... Uh... So even if the army went home and killed all of that, by the time it got there, mm -hmm. all the tech is gone. So Nina can't build anything. All Nina has is the gold base in the top right. So she's got the purple gas, but there is no longer a way for her to spend it. That's it. There's there's nothing. Uh, could maybe go for an upgrade on the forge. That's that thing. She's also supply block. <laughs> that would be the move. Like you need the plus one armor or for the shield. Gotta get for that 28 minute plus one plasma shield timing, baby. That's what we live for. Yeah. So Scarlet maybe not taking the cleanest way to getting to the end result, but in the end, if she can win the game, I think that all that uh, that is all that really matters, right? Still, you know what's good against Zerklings? Storm. What? Storm. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I've heard. I've heard the rumors. They're coming. <laughs> They're coming. They're here. I uh, think the... oh, I like this. This Scarlet's just like you are broke. I don't care. I'm just gonna click on this Nexus and see how many times you can afford to rebuild it. Secret answer: none. Nina has 391 minerals, but there's still a nexus. So with long distance mining, it will come back at least one more time. And Started making one beautiful. queen. That's what she needs. Beautiful. One creep tumor to the get PVZ back in that direction. To end all PVZs. And now she's got the nine o'clock base. All right. A couple of abductions once again. Yeah, those storms are still killer though. Now, Scarlet at this point also playing very cautiously, right? She's got a lot of money in the bank. I'm not sure why she's not spending it. I think she's got to gotta keep yeeting the lings, right? It's the only resource that's maybe not as hard to replace. But even then, she's only going to get a couple more, a couple thousand minerals left on this map. But this is the way to do it. Just click on it. Just click on the Nexus. Kill the bases. I, I just win by elimination. There's no more money. Okay, there's the overcharge. <laughs> just, okay. Yeah. Plus yeah, for the okay. adrenal gland, Zerkling's pretty good even against overcharge, apparently. Well, Nina yeah. recalls back. Uh, there's still 12 probes and 400 minerals, so she will most likely try to rebuild that Nexus one more time. And uh, we we keep we keep pr pressing ever onward. Four High Templar are left. Plenty of energy for storms still. Mm. Oh! Oh, that's one way to do it. How many High Templar? Three. Three High Templar left. Okay. Yeah, technically you should be able to outrange that. Like the, the feedback of range is longer than the abduction range. Mm. Mm. Well, I think uh, this, I think we're starting to see tide come, tide comes in, tide goes out. Can't explain that. Can't explain that, Loco. <laughs> is it magic? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> We've asked these questions for centuries and all we're left with. Science is <laughs> still yet to figure it's, it out. It's, yeah. Just the one of those great mysteries. Just kind of hanging there. We don't know how it works either. Yeah. Could yeah. it be related? I don't know. One of those discs they fire off into space with all human <laughs> knowledge has this unanswered question at the front of it, just in case. Yeah, it's kind of thinking, okay, I've lost a little bit too much to the Templar at this point. I'll just play the absolute safest build that I can go for here. And yeah, eventually the Zorklings are going to be able to uh, take care of these necks high up north. Nina now at zero supply. Well, 68 out of eight. Wait, did I just yeah. misread that or did she just finish something? Pylon must have finished. Yeah, Pylon by the by the purple gas base. And then that's, then <laughs> that's, that's it. Cannon. She's starting a cannon. Just because you know, right now the worst thing that could happen would be if a burrowed infester came in, <laughs> neural yeah. the high Templar and stormed Nina's own army. But thankfully, th thankfully that's not possible. Look at the dancing uh, changeling on the watchtower. Ooh. There's a change thing oh! on the watchtower. I know there's a yeah. fight going on over here, but uh, okay, it's fine. Yeah. 
There it is. That Look at him. Things, hey, sometimes you gotta, gotta go to twerk. You know, it is what it is. GG, Scarlet takes it 2-1.